pray. Eternal God, I thank you for this opportunity. Father, I thank you for this weekend. I thank you for bringing us all here together safely, Heavenly Father. Get us back home to our families safely, Heavenly Father. We thank you for everything that has happened, and we give you all the honor and glory and praise right now. As I stand before my brothers, Father, give me the word and the clarity to speak, Father, your holy word. Father, I thank you. I thank you for all these things. We thank you for all these things as a family in your son, Jesus Christ's name. We all say and pray. Amen. 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 Wow. What a weekend, gentlemen. What an incredible weekend. It's been, it's been, it's been one, it's like glory to glory. It's, it's, it's been one great conversation after another. And, you know, as, as, as I reflect back on this weekend, it's going to be one of those things that I say, well, I want to do it again. You know, and I, and I know a lot of you have, are saying the same thing. You want to do it again. But how are we going to do it again, you know? It's, it's almost like a marriage, you know? You know when you first get married, for all you gentlemen here that are married or have been married, it's like when you get married, like the first year, everything is great, you know? It's like, man, I got the best woman in the world, you know? Then after about three and four and five years, you know, things, things start to change a little bit. So what can we do to make that, ma you know, marriage, you got to work. You got to work to have a good marriage. It's not like, you know, you're just going to be married and, and life is just is happily ever after. You know, you got to work. And so I, I envision us doing this, the same thing two years from now or whenever. You know, it's something that we have to work at. It's something that we have to, you know, uh, pour together and, um, you know, make happen. So it's been a blessing to me. It's been a blessing for my daughter. It's been a blessing uh, for all of us. And we can take this back and, and really just uh, plant seeds and, and, and come back and do it again. I was thinking, like, what, what were some of the things I, that, that I would share about this morning? And, and besides the great memories, I, I, I want to touch on briefly 11 1907. Many of you know about 11 1907. I was in a tragedy, and that's what I call it a tragedy because uh, uh, it wasn't an accident. This individual that struck my family, it was seven of us in the vehicle, this individual that struck, out, struck my family that night, he was. He was twice the legal limit consumed with alcohol. This is what Coach was talking about last night, about alcohol and the destruction of it. Uh, he was twice the le legal limit consumed. He was, he was an open homosexual, uh, you know, and I, I, don't, I don't gay bash and all that, you know, but, 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 but my faith, our faith teaches us it is an abomination for male to be with male. That's what it is. And so you have to call a spade for what it is. It's, it's an abomination before God. And so he, he was an open homosexual. He, he was uh, said to have AIDS, and, and he, was, he was essentially uh, uh, trying to kill himself and, and, and kill someone else. You know, if you could listen to the 911 phone calls afterwards, uh, it will horrify you. Uh, uh, he, three people, he ran off the road that night before he got to my van. He went about 12 miles uh, before he got to us. Now, he, he, he struck us, and he died, unfortunately, and, and my family passed. And, you know, that was uh, on November the 19th, and... November the 29th, I can recall uh, uh, going to uh, the funeral of my two daughters in Hartford, Alabama, two daughters that I had fathered in a previous relationship before I was married. And it was my 18-year-old daughter who was home for Thanksgiving. Uh, she was there. Uh, what, a, what an incredible kid. Time doesn't allow me to go into testimony of, of all of my children, but I would touch on her as 18 years old. Uh, she was a teenager that was accountable. She was a teenager that did what she was supposed to do. She was a teenager that, you know what, she made a father proud. You know, she was a teenager that, that was over there, and I, she lived in her, her own apartment, guys, and, and she was there, she was there leading a Bible study with, with, with her fast pitch uh, girls softball team. She, she, she was content in her character. The, the Bible says godliness with contentment is great gain. It's a beautiful thing to be content with, with who you are. You know, I heard Coach speak about it last night, you know, being content, being, 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 being not envious of what someone else has, but being content with what you have. You know, if I'm, if, if I'm satisfied with, with where I am, you know, then I don't have to worry about what Derek has, or I don't have to worry about what Kevin has, or, or, or somebody else, you know. To be content with who you are, man, it'll take you a long way. That was my 18-year-old daughter. I was going into that church that day, see all of my Alabama family, you know, just showed up. That's just come out of nowhere. You know, one of the things about this, some of the stuff you, you don't even see, you know. And when I think back to that night of 11, 1907, there's some things that I never saw, you know. I never saw in the hospital room a man who came all the way from Paris, Texas to, to be there. Uh, you know, Coach Stalin was there. He got on the plane and came. 
you know, that night. He came in there, was speaking to me in, 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 in the hospital room. I, I don't remember any of this. See, I, I went into a coma, and, 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 and my recollection have to go back to November the 11th, uh, the last time I had a conversation with my wife. You know, it's the last time. And, and he, Coach was telling me last night, you know, I'm still finding out things. He said, Seren, they had these tubes and all this stuff in there, and you was trying to get up. You know, I, and I was begging coaches, coach, let me up, let, let, let me up, you know, and I don't, I don't recall any of it. But, 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 you know, I think at that point they may have told me my, my family w w was, w was not here. Now, you're looking at, you're talking about a 36-year-old wife, 18-year-old daughter, 10-year-old son, Bronson Alexander. You're talking about a 9-year-old daughter, Sydney Marie, and my 2-year-old baby, all in a second. They say it was about 20 minutes uh, that I was in that van uh, that night before anyone could get in there. You know, and I thought for that 20 minutes or so, that was the last time I was father to my son and my daughters. And that was the last time, you know, I was, I was husband with my wife. You know, what was going on for that 20 minutes? Who, who was saying something? You know, somebody was saying something in that band that night. You know, somebody was saying something. I asked a state trooper this about, I know sometimes in 2008, I said, I said, who was alive? He said, he said, Mr. Stacy. He shook his head. He said, uh, he said, it was quick, and and I knew when he when he paused. See, if he'd have never just paused, but he paused. He, he he wanted to tell me, but but he 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 had to somehow spare me, and that's what I knew. I knew that somebody was in that van that night speaking to me. Somebody. It wasn't quick. Somebody was speaking to father. Somebody was speaking. You know, was it my wife? Was it Bronson? What somebody was crying to me. That was my last. That was my last time we were there together. Go into that go into that church that day I see I see uh, 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 Lucretia and I see Sydney and, and I don't I don't I don't uh, I just want to get out of there okay I just want to get out of there and I tell everybody you know I tell my brother he came home from Virginia I said you take me home um, I, I don't want to deal with this any longer and and he goes uh, 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 we go to the grave site and and I, I can recall this very well and I said Bruce I said I'm done we start out that morning and now we get into the evening. I said, just take me home, and I just want to go. He said, I can't take you home, brother. I said, why can't you take me home? He said, I got to take you to Geneva. I said, why are you taking me to Geneva? He said, that's where Bronx and Ellie, and, and Ellie is. I said, what are you talking about? I said, you take me to Geneva. You know, the doctor said that my recollection wouldn't all be there, that my memory was, was, was forever changed, and, and we was going to Geneva all in the same day. We get to Geneva. I go into now a funeral parlor, and I see my entire Destin family inside there, and they're looking at me with, with horrific looks. And, and my pastor grabs me. He, he said, he said, he said, he said, Saran, he said, they're just shells. He said, they're just shells. He looks at me with, with, with that authority, like, like LeBaron was speaking. He, he, he said, they're just shells. I said, what are you talking about? And I break loose from him. And then I see it. I see, for the first time, I see my two-year-old little baby. I see, I see little Ellie. I see her in the casket, and I see, I see, I see Bronson, my ten-year-old son, and then I see, I see my wife, and then that's the first time that I knew, you know, after ten days, you know, I knew, I knew that they were gone. I went to a place that I can't really even describe now, but I went to a place that goes beyond my words and understanding. Now we get into this, we get into this thing that I was speaking last night, where, where in, 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 there's a multitude of counselors, okay, you know, their safety. Where there's a multitude of counselors, there's safety. I'm gonna get into this safety thing and get into this counselor thing. I looked it up in the Hebrew last night. You know, a counselor is someone that can advise, someone that can rescue, you know, someone that can speak to you. And and, and this thing says, you know, in, in the multitude of counselors. And I thought, you know, I, I've had a multitude of men and women praying for me. I had a multitude of counselors. I didn't just have one or two. It said there's safety in the multitude of counselors. You know, and I thought about it, you know, as I got to this place uh, that, that, that I, I did not want to be here anymore. I, 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 I became despondent. I became, I became this, you know, this, this, I don't know. I don't know what I was, but, but people showed up out of nowhere. I remember Kevin at a golf tournament in Birmingham, and I, and, and I, and I can remember looking at people. You know, I wasn't saying a whole lot. You know what? I wasn't, I wasn't uh, coherent like, like, like I am now. But I saw people. I saw Roger, you know, in that restaurant. He, he was, you know, a multitude of counselors saying, speaking words of life. You know, words of life, words of life. That's a power, you know, Proverbs tells us life and death is in the power of the tongue. Literally, what, what comes out of our mouth is, is, is life or death. You know, 